Hey everybody, this video is all about VORs and how we're using VORs for navigation. This is a topic that gives us all a lot of trouble, whether we're VFR, IFR, doesn't really matter. VORs crop up and it's an area that I get a lot of questions about, an area that I struggled a lot with. So we're going to look at all of the different ways to navigate using the VOR in this video. Uh, so first, uh, just a big, big shout out to the VOR simulator created by Fergo here. You can see the link. Uh, so I encourage everyone to check out this website to get a little bit more practice with the, VO, uh, with the VORs. So this is what I'm using uh, to, to demo this today. So big recommendation there. And just a quick review of the VOR. So if we go over and we look at a chart and we look at the VOR here, it's the Sheridan VOR and it's just in, uh, in Wyoming, right near the border with Montana uh, in Sheridan County. So the first thing to notice is that classic uh, telltale hexagon. Um, this one is a hexagon within a box or a square, so that tells you that it's a VOR and then a DME or distance measuring equipment station is located uh, there as well. Um, so that's the actual location. The symbol there gives you the actual location of the, VO, uh, of the VOR station. And then you have the information about the VOR itself. You've got the name of it, Sheridan, the identifier, SHR, Sierra Hotel uh, Romeo. <clears throat> and then you got the uh, dots and dashes to tell you what the Morse identifier would be. Finally, you have the frequency, 115.3. So that's what we'll tune into in order to pick up that signal. Uh, you got some other information on here. Uh, Casper is the, the flight service station, and then you have a flight service uh, frequency. Um, that's not really what we're looking at here, but it's just information that you get uh, with all of the, uh, the VOR identifiers. So it's the Sheridan VOR 115.3. So if we go back to the simulator, we already have it uh, depicted here. Now, the first or most basic way to use a VOR is to figure out what heading the aircraft needs to fly in order to go towards the VOR station. So if I put my aircraft here, just to, to the west or to the to the west southwest of the station, we can we can eyeball this because we're we're cheating. We can see everything and know that I'll need to fly roughly I don't know about a zero seven zero to get to that station. But remember, when you're in your aircraft, you're not going to have this view unless you have a GPS or something like that, which of course negates the 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 whole point of having the VOR. Um, but what we want to do is we want to use our VOR receiver, which is right over here, this, this uh, third instrument on the right here. And the, again, the most basic way that we can use that is to tell us what heading we need to fly to fly towards that VOR station. So if I twist the knob, the knob is called the OBS, or the Omni Bearing Selector. If I twist that, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the needle to center, and then I'm looking for that to from flag. Uh, you, you notice that as I turn it, it flips. I'm looking for it to point up or two, and then I'm looking for that needle to center. So I've got the arrow pointed up towards two, and now I have the needle centered. And what I see is that it's roughly a 080 heading to fly inbound. So if I'm actually flying this and I can make my aircraft start flying, I'll want to turn myself to the left. So now I'm almost a south heading. So if I make a left turn, I'll start to fly towards. Now watch what happens to that needle, right? That needle's no longer centered. So I'm gonna roll out on the 080 heading that I told myself, but you can see how the aircraft's not pointed towards station. The needle is off to the left. What that means, I want you to remember this, chase the needle. The needle is to the left. I need to fly to the left of my uh, heading that's set on the VOR. So the heading is set as 080. I wanna fly to the left of that. So let's call it like a zero, uh, zero 050, zero. we're pretty far off. And I'll hold that heading, maybe a little more. A good rule of thumb, I think, is like a 45 degree intercept. So we're flying zero 045 now off of zero 080. Zero. So that's that's uh, almost a intercept of 45 degrees. That will usually help us. And what we're gonna look for is that as we get close to the line, that original line that was drawing the airplane or that, that line that was being drawn between where the airplane originally was in the station. So we get close to that line, that needle will start to center. When the needle fully centers, we're gonna resume flying 080. So what we're doing is chasing the needle by flying to the left of 080. When the needle centers again, we're gonna turn right 
resuming that 080 heading. So there we are rolling out 080. We can make little corrections from there. So it's just a tad to the right. So we'll fly maybe five degrees to the right of 080, 085 heading, and slowly watch that needle come back in. It's guess and check, right? We're letting that needle tell us what to do. And once it centers again, I'll resume that 080. So this looks good. Uh, I'm on 080, which is my uh, heading that's set up here. That needle should stay in the center. Again, if I were to get to the left or to the right of this imaginary line, the needle would be swinging. And what happens is as I get close, needle starts to deflect a little bit. As it gets into what's called the zone of confusion, the cone of confusion, that basically it, it's too close to really understand. We get full deflection. And then watch as I cross over, that flag is gonna flip from two to from. So that white arrow is gonna go from being pointed up towards two to there it goes being pointed down towards from. All that means is that on this heading, if I maintain that, I'm now, I've gone from flying towards the station to flying away, makes sense, right? But that same imaginary line from before is now still being uh, drawn outside. It's, it's extending away from the station or radiating away from the station. And the same concept applies. I can still chase the needle to the right and have it come swing back towards center and when it does so, resume. So that's the most basic way to use a VOR is to tell it, uh, okay, I wanna know what heading I need to fly to get to the station. And then once you get to the station, You'll pass the station, the flag will flip from to to from, and then you'll be flying outbound. So that's all very well and good. What happens though when we get deflected? So anytime you're flying, you're gonna be dealing with wind. So here we are, we're, we're roughly west of the station. We'll start flying again, and we say, okay, what heading need, uh, do I need to get inbound? So again, I'll turn till the needle centers. It's gonna be about a 092 heading. We'll fly that. And then if I start telling it to give me a little bit of wind, just a wind out of the north of, you know, just a little bit of wind. And what's gonna happen is, you can see it here, the, the airplane is getting pushed um, north to south, and that line will start to deflect to the left. So now, chase the needle. Instead of 090, I need to correct a little bit more to the left. So let's try something like 070, a 70 heading. Now, is the needle coming back in on me? It's, it, it's not, it's still deflecting. So I'm gonna correct even more to the left. Something like 050, again, it's all guess and check. So here we are correcting, this is good. Now, to think about this, when the needle centers again, I'm gonna need to turn to a heading that's gonna keep me moving inbound. And because of the wind, it's not gonna be 090, it's gonna be maybe 080. And you notice that's not enough, it's deflecting still. So we'll have to come more to the left and of course, we're getting really close to the station now, so it's going to become really, really sensitive. But what we'll see as we pass and we go outbound and we'll, we'll continue to do the same exercise is we can still zero in on what that wind correction should be. So there's our flip. Again, we're just still flying outbound. Looks like that needle is very slowly coming into center. So what's going to happen here is that when that needle centers, I'm just going to come a little bit more to the right, maybe like three, five degrees at the very most. And be patient here because we're just gonna help it out a little bit coming to the left and when that needle centers, so I'm currently at 070, I'm gonna try 075. And I think that's gonna keep that needle frozen. Not quite, it's still deflecting just a tad. So let's correct one more time. Get that needle to center. And instead of making that 075 correction, Let's just try a nice 072. And I think, for all intents and purposes here, I think we've got that needle frozen. So notice this. I have as my heading set on the VOR is about a 095. And in fact, that's the line that radiates out from the station, 095 degrees. But because of the wind pushing me north to south, in order to hold that line, I need to fly about a, well, I need to fly a 072. So I have about a 20 degree wind correction in. And you can see that visually there between what's on the VOR head, 092, 
or uh, 094 to be precise, and 072 on the heading. And what we're doing is we're flying along an imaginary line that is radiating out from the station at 094 degrees. The reason I use that word radiate is because the name for the line is called a radial. Radials radi out, radiate out from the station. So we'll cancel the wind and we'll talk about radials here for a second. So if I go back and look at my chart and I say, okay, that's great. Now I know what I need to do if I want to fly to the VOR station, but there's going to be so many other places that I'm going to want to fly that don't have VORs located on them, like for an airport, for example. So if I look just a little bit to the southeast, I notice down here is an airport, Johnson County, Bravo Yankee Golf. And this airport is located on this blue line. If you do any IFR training or if you know from your sectional, this blue line is called the Victor Airway, the V right there, Victor, and it's V for VOR because it's based off of radials off of a VOR. So you see a lot of them here. There's, there's some blue ones down here, some blue ones up here, and they're all based off of, or they're all radiating out from the Sheridan VOR itself. So it just so happens that this radial, or this Victor Airway, passes right over the Johnson County Airport. So we can use that to navigate because we'll know that if we can fly along the one, uh, the this radial, which is the 142 radial, you can see it written there, and then you can tell what the relative or, or, or the or the uh, approximate bearing is of that line by looking at the compass rose, right? So every VOR is going to have this compass rose around it. <clears throat> Due magnetic north is going to be up here zero. Due magnetic south one eight, and you can tell by looking really close here that if you go from here, which would be the 150, it goes in five degree increments to 145, to just to this side of 140 means that, yeah, this line is 142 degree line from the Sheridan VOR. This is the 142 radial from the Sheridan VOR. So if we know how to fly along this line and we know how far to fly along this line, we'll be able to navigate to the Johnson County Airport. So those two pieces of information, we, we have the one, now we just need to know how far it is between the VOR and the Johnson County Airport. So if I just make waypoints, and by the way, you, know, you, you could do this on Sky Vector with the, with the computer, or you could do it uh, um, on a chart with, uh, with your plotter and a pencil, right? All you need to do is get out your, your plotter and figure out what the distance is between the Johnson County Airport and the Sheridan VOR. So Sky Vector will tell us it's 31 nautical miles along that VOR. So that's what we'll look for. And remember that we have as an added aid here, because of this square inside the symbol or outside the symbol, it means that not only is it VOR, but there's a distance measuring equipment, a DME station located there as well. So back to the simulator and let's bring ourselves down into this position right here and so now, rather than going to the Sheridan VOR, we're gonna to wanna to intercept that line. And notice I've got the airport depicted down here, you know, roughly what it would be bearing from the chart, right? Just to the kind of the, the south, southwest, I guess. I'm sorry, the south, southeast. So I know it was the 142 radial. I'll show it again here. So I wanna set my 142 radial onto the VOR. And now let's look at some information here, right? The only thing I, you know, I don't know where I am in relation to the station or the airport or anything like that. All I know is that I've set this guy and my heading is roughly east, northeast, 072. But <clears throat> two things I know, I have the flag pointing it from and I have the arrow off to the right. So now I'm flying away on the radial. So when I have everything set up and I'm on that line, I want that to from flag to show from. So that's that's good. We're already halfway there, right? If I was over on this side, it would show two, right? Because I haven't crossed 
uh, over the station on that line yet, right? We'll talk a little bit more. That's a complicated concept. We'll talk a little bit more about that a little later on. But basically, I've got half the battle here that the to from flag is showing from. The other thing I have is the line deflected to the right. <clears throat> so remember, chase the needle. I want to chase that needle by flying more to the right of the heading I've selected. So I selected 142, that's the radial. And as I said before, a good intercept is like a 45 degree intercept. So let's add 45 to that. We can get our airplane start flying and we'll make a right turn. And I've gotten rid of the wind, by the way, just to keep it simple. And I'm gonna go 45 degrees beyond this. So to the, the, the quick pilot mental math is 187. So I'm gonna hold this heading until I hit 187. And I'm gonna do myself a favor and just kind of pull myself a little bit over, a little cheating, but, but, but it's, it's all for educational purposes. So I'm gonna hold that 187 heading. And I'm gonna wait until that needle starts to come center. And when it does, I'm gonna begin turning left so that I can resume and that I can continue that 142. So here comes the needle and I'll start making the turn. And what I'm trying to do is roll out of the turn at 142, just as the needle centers. If I miss it, no big deal. Here, I just happen to have gotten it pretty close, maybe just a little bit more correction to the left. Now, the other thing I wanna look at is the distance. So down here at the bottom left, I have the DME distance, and it's clicking upwards as I fly further away from the station. Remember that we were looking for a DME distance of 31 miles, and that was gonna be where we, when we knew that we were over the airport. So I'm watching for that, and basically as I approach that 31, I'm gonna know that I'm getting close to being right over the airport. And then what's gonna happen right when I get to 31 is that the aircraft is gonna be just positioned directly over the field, uh, just, just, just as we have here. So that's a great way to be able to tell how can I navigate to an airport or how can I navigate to some place that isn't located at a VOR station or doesn't have a VOR station close to it. And the answer is you need two things. You need to know the radial that it lies on. And here we just happen to have a really easy way of telling what the radial is uh, because it's, uh, it's lying right there on the 142. Um, so we need to know that and we need to know the distance. And both of those things can be figured out with the chart. Um, so this, this was really convenient because there's an actual Victor airway that's drawn on the chart that tells us the radial. Um, but if we didn't have that, like if we were going to this airport, South Bighorn, it wouldn't be much harder. All you gotta do is, again, just draw a line between the two, uh, the VOR and the airport. And what we're looking at is the compass rose. And you notice the line is just a little bit to the side here. This would be 245, this, this hash mark here. So maybe it's a 240, excuse me, it would, this hash mark would be 235. And so maybe this line right here would indicate about a 236 um, heading. And again, that's the radial away from and the distance is 48 miles. Now notice something, you might see here, you know, even though I said the radial was 236, you might notice I said 056. Well, if you saw how I did this line, I drew it from here to there. So it's basically the opposite. Um, that's a really important point because that is um, an easy way to get confused. You know, if you select, okay, I wanna fly the radial and that's radiating out from the station, 236 degrees. Well, that's what I wanna have set. I don't wanna have the opposite or, or the reciprocal set 056. But just to prove the point, if I redraw everything and I go from the VOR station, oops, and do it from scratch. So again, just selecting the VOR and then selecting the airport. And that gives me, there it is, the 236. So again, those two pieces of information I need, the radial 236, and the distance, DME 48 miles. And I'd be able to find my way to any airport or anything else uh, that uh, is within reception range of the VOR, okay? So that is navigating to an airport along a radial. Now, these other radials or these other Victor Airways, they're serving other purposes. It's not just there to get us to airports that are conveniently located along uh, a Victor Airway. It's pretty rare for an airport to, to happen to be there. Um, these Victor Airways are here for in-route navigation typically. So for, for those of you who are into your IFR training, 
um, you'll be sort of familiar with these. And, and you know, we even talk about them a little bit in, in private pilot VFR training, but they're there to help us navigate a long airway. So if we're doing long distance IFR flying, uh, we'll navigate airways between VOR to VOR. It's where the V in Victor Airway comes from, VOR. So this one here, this is the Victor 86 Victor Airway. And it's also co-located or it's merged with the Victor 611. But, but let's let's have a look at this Victor 86. And what is the Victor 86 Airway? Well, it's defined as the 302 radial from the Sheridan VOR. But then it's also defined, if you continue off to the east side of it, here it is again here, it's also defined as the 095 radial from the Sheridan VOR. So basically we'll fly along this radial, the 302 radial inbound to the VOR, and then we'll fly 095 outbound. So the, that's kind of how the uh, VOR station is defined. So how do we actually fly that? Well, going back here, we'll take ourselves and we'll start ourselves to the Northwest. And we say, okay, I wanna fly the 302 radial. I wanna fly along that 302 radial, but I wanna fly inbound. So this is where you gotta be careful. We can't set 302 up top. It has to be at the bottom now. <clears throat> so we'll put that 302 on the bottom. And what that does for us is it puts the reciprocal, 122 on the top. Um, so this is not the most intuitive thing in the world. So, okay, well, why wouldn't you put the 302 up top? It's the 302 radial. But remember, radials radiate out from the station. We're not flying out from the station in this case. We're flying into the station. So obviously a 302 heading isn't going to do us any good. That's going to take us northwest <clears throat> further away. We want the opposite direction. So rather than doing all the math, you just stick that 302 on the bottom, gives you the inbound heading, the 122, but here we are over here and we're kind of pointed askew. So now we need to know, okay, what heading do I need to fly in order to get on that radial, in order to get on that line? So we see, first of all, the arrow pointed two, which is, which is what we wanna see. We wanna see that um, we're on the side of the station that's gonna take us in two the VOR, and then we see the needle off to the left, which means that we want to fly to the left of this heading. Uh, so once again, uh, it'll be about 45 degrees to the left of 122. So let's get our airplane moving a little bit. I'll start it slowly this time, and we'll fly to the left. So uh, 45 left of 122. The, the the quick math is gonna is gonna complicate me. So I'm just gonna estimate about a 085 heading. You lose, you lose some IQ points in the cockpit here. So even in the simulated cockpit, uh, I'm not going to try to do too much heavy math. But basically, um, that's going to get me about maybe uh, 37 degrees off. So maybe we'll go another an extra five just to, to make it a really nice intercept. All right, so I'll hold this heading, 080, and I'll be watching for this needle to start coming in. And here it comes, starting to come in towards center. And what's going to happen when it centers is I'm going to fly this 122 heading. As I get close, I'll start making the turn, trying to roll out right on that 122. Here it is. And it's a little bit off, right? It's a little bit to the left. So what I want to do is I want to correct just a tiny bit to the left of 122. Coming a little left and we'll give that needle some time to come in. If it's not coming in fast enough, I can correct more, but I'm but I'm okay. We're not too, too close. You see here, we're getting 16 miles a little closer. There it is in the center, back to 122 heading, and I should have that needle frozen because I'm on the radial and uh, I am having the needle centered. Now, let's think about what's gonna happen. Let's go back to the chart for a second. I'm on this line flying inbound on a 302 radial. When I cross the station, I'm gonna to need to make a left turn so that I can stay on the Victor 86 airway. Now, it's a little easier because I'm flying away from the station on the radial, which means that that is gonna be my heading right there, that's 095. So I'm on like a 122 heading now. When I get close to the station, it's just gonna be a matter of making a left turn 
to a 095 heading. So back to the simulator, and we'll resume flying. Now, if I have the luxury of having the DME, I can kind of anticipate when this turn is coming. If we didn't have that, you would need to look for when the needle starts to go askew and, and, and it starts getting into that confusion zone. And when that happens, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn to 095. That's the first step. And then we're gonna twist the VOR head to 095. And what we're looking for is we get far enough away that it's not confused anymore is how to correct. So that needle is just a tad to the right. So we'll come to the tad to the right of 095, give the needle a chance to get back in the center. And when it does, resume a 095 heading. And what we've done is we've made that turn at station passage. Notice the flag is now shown from, and we are continuing our flight along Victor 86, the, uh, the, the Victor airway that we selected. So that's how that works. Now, what would happen if we made a mistake here and we went and we said, okay, we're up here and we want to fly inbound on that 302 radial, but rather than, than realizing that, okay, because we're flying inbound on a radial which goes away from the station, we set 302. It's a very, very common mistake to make. So again, here we, here we are up towards the northwest. And we say, okay, I see 302 on the chart. Well, I'm just gonna put 302 in on my VOR. And I'm gonna have that tell me how to fly in. So here, here it is. Now notice right away, this should be our, our tip off, is that the arrow is pointing away from. We wanna to fly to the station, so that's not correct. But we don't notice that, we start flying. And we say, okay, the needle's to the right. I need to correct to the right of that 302 heading. So I'm gonna turn my airplane. And just, a, it's not that far off, so I'm just gonna fly uh, a little bit to the right of 302, uh, maybe something like a you know 310 heading, right? And I notice, okay, well that's not really working. Maybe I need to fly a little bit more to the right. Now some of you might see exactly what's going wrong here, but remember we're we're in the airplane right now. Our heads are down. We don't have this this this, you know, uh, we, we can't see everything. So it's starting to slowly come back around. And you realize maybe at this point, that, wait, wait a second, I'm flying to the Northwest. I wanna be flying back inbound. So you make a really quick correction. You say, wait, I gotta fly the exact opposite of this heading. Well, I can say, all right, the exact opposite is gonna be about a 122 heading. So I'll fly that. I say, okay, now at least I'm going the right direction, but needles off to the right. Okay, so now I want to correct to the right of my 122. And you see how complicated this gets. So I've done that. You know, the logic is, is sort of sound, but notice what happens. That needle starts to deflect even more. If I want to chase that needle and I have it set up incorrectly, I actually need to fly away from the needle. It's the opposite of chase the needle. So rather than fly to the right of 122, I'm going to fly to the left of it, 090. Notice the needle. Now actually starting to come center. This is called reverse sensing. And you see how complicated it is because it really puts your, your, your brain in a mental twist. It's possible to do, and some pilots do it um, for various reasons, especially if you're doing a VOR hold, sometimes they'll, they'll, they'll do things like that. I don't personally do it because uh, I, 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 my, my brain just doesn't do that kind of gymnastics that quickly. But reverse sensing is exactly what it sounds like. If the needle starts to deflect to the left, I need to actually come to the right to make it work. So how do I know when I'm in this situation, when I'm in trouble like this? The easiest way is to look at what you have set in the VOR. You should have the same direction, the same type of heading set up here. These are at odds right now. We're, we have a, a southeast heading here and a northwest heading here. So the big, big rule of thumb with VORs is to always have agreement between uh, what's on the VOR and what your heading is. Now, obviously it's not always gonna be the same heading because you're making corrections, but in the case of flying inbound along this radial, I'm gonna wanna have that inbound heading set. It's not the radial, it's the reciprocal of the radial.
just remember radi radials radiate out from the station. So if you're going into the station, you want the reciprocal. All right. So that now we're in agreement. So that even if um, I'm correcting like I am here, nope, I want to go left of the station, not right. See how I'm already getting myself twisted. So even if I'm correcting like I am here to the left, it's still in agreement, right? We still have a roughly southeast and southeast um, situation going. That's that's kind of my target is um, always in agreement, right? So if you look at yourself and you, you see reciprocals, one, one here is a reciprocal of whatever's here, you know that you're, you're getting in a situation where you might be seeing reverse sensing. All right. A lot of questions on the FAA test, both the private pilot and the IFR test, deal with asking what radial the aircraft is on. So if I tell you that you're on one of these blue lines, you should be able to tell me what radial you're on, right? If you're on this line, you're on the 142 radial. If you're on this line, you're on the 095 radial, right? Etc. Etc. Now, remember, if my airplane is pointed up, left, or <laughs> if my airplane is pointed north, east, west, or south, None of that stuff matters, right? It's all about where my aircraft is in on this two-dimensional map, right? So no matter where I'm pointed, if I'm on this blue line, if I'm on this Victor Airway, I'm on the 142 radial. So a lot of questions on the test are gonna deal with that. And they're gonna throw you off, they're gonna try to trip you up by uh, throwing something like heading into the mix. And it doesn't matter. So let's see, if I just put my airplane anywhere, I say, okay, what radial is this aircraft on? The thing to do is to twist the knob, and what you're looking for is you're looking for the from flag. Remember, radi radials radiate out from the station, and then you're looking for the needle to center. There we are. So, we have the from flag, needle centered, showing me on the 278 radial. And just reality check yourself, right? If I draw a line out from the station to the plane, that's about a 278 heading, or it should be exactly a 278 heading. Now, something to notice, if I start to turn the aircraft, and, and I'm not moving, by the way, no matter what, no matter what my heading is, that needle stays centered because as long as I'm not moving, I'm on that radial. So whether I approach the radial from the north or south, so let's, let's take myself up a little bit and I start to come forward. Now, as I approach that line, as I approach the radial, the needle will start to swing until I'm on the line, and then it'll be in the center. And that is gonna be the exact same case if I approach this radial from the opposite direction and the opposite heading, right? Only this time it's coming from the other side. But the point is, is that regardless of what my aircraft heading is, when I'm on that radial and I have the radial selected and the from flag, that needle will center. Now, what heading do I need to fly to get to the station? Well, if I'm on the 278 radial, it's not 278 degrees, right? That's just gonna take me further away from the station. So I need to fly the reciprocal. So uh, a lot of VOR heads will, will actually have the, the, the arrow pointing down here so you don't have to do the uh, the tough math, but, it, but it's gonna be a 09, um, <clears throat> 098 heading to get into the station. So I turn that and some of you might already be anticipating a little bit of a problem, right? So I know I'm flying into the station, but guess what? Reciprocal heading set, so it's gonna be reverse sensing. So if I wanna now make sure that I'm doing this correctly, I gotta put that 098 heading up there. A lot of people get into trouble with this when they're doing VOR holds, um, where they're, they're reverse sensing when they maybe don't mean to. So now I can make a chase the needle type correction. Oops, to the right. I'll have it center and resume flying. Of course, now I'm so close that it's that it's going to be uh, tough to nail this exactly. But that's the idea. All right. So one last thing I want to show you, just a really quick and dirty uh, way of determining where you are. All right. If I just drop the airplane anywhere, and I want to know where the station is in relation to my aircraft. So right now I'm on a roughly about an east heading. I don't know if I'm you know, north of, south of, east of, west of, I don't know where I am in relation to this VOR. We, we can see it because we can see the chart here, but I'm in the cockpit right now. Easy thing I can do is match up your VOR with your heading. So right now we're on a 099 heading. 
And if I put 099 on the VOR, it gives me two pieces of information. It gives me the from flag, pointed, uh, pointed to the from, and it gives me the needle off to the right. What that means is if I kind of draw a cross along my aircraft position here, if I imagine a cross along my aircraft position here, it means that, first of all, the station's behind me. So it's it's behind me a beam point, right? So it's, it's, it's towards my 6 o'clock instead of my 12, 12 o'clock. And it's to the right side. So I can kind of split myself into quadrants here, and I know that I'm in that behind on the right quadrant. Okay? And I can translate that onto my directional gyro. All right? So this is me pointed at a 099. Um, the station is somewhere in this lower hemisphere of the directional gyro, and it's somewhere in the right hemisphere. So it's down here somewhere. So it's something like a 210 or a 244 or something like that. All right? So I can either start flying that inbound, or I can start twisting. And I know that somewhere in like the 210 or the 240 heading is where I'll be able to get the needle center and the two indication. So it's easy to become confused as to where you are in relation to the VOR, that's a really fast and dirty way of telling where you are in relation to all that. And then from there, if you want, you can fly inbound, direct, or you can intercept the radial, whatever whatever your fancy is here, whatever, whatever we're trying to accomplish navigation-wise. All right, so that is the basics of VOR. Um, really, my, my best recommendation is to get up on uh, this website here, fergones.net. Uh, give it a try. Take a lot of practice with it because it takes a lot of practice to wrap your head around a lot of these things. Um, and best of luck.